Hello, this is Zombie Paper. Um, this video here, uh, I thought of the idea last night, and, and I was uh, thinking through it enough to want to do a whole uh, topic about it, and then also, um, you know, kind of like do a little bit of practice on it. So um, the idea is we'll start with uh, just listing on all out here. Um, I'm not sure going forward. Uh, which category I'm going to use, or like the the overlay side panels I'll be using going forward, but for right now, uh, medical stuff seems seems okay. So, uh, sober versus recovery. That just perfectly fit. Yeah, so much so that uh, capitalizing it, put it down there. So, um, well, they kind of like let's. Uh, Let's do something here first. Uh, this will pop out over here. So what we'll do is we'll go to uh, uh, one of my favorite websites, uh, etmoonline.com. Etmo uh, make the show notes for this as well, so that way we can uh, make sure to get that all sorted out and all squared away. Um, because I'm a writer, I like to look at uh, the etymology of words. Um, so what I'll be doing here is I'm doing this off screen for no real reason. Um, let's see. So when it comes to, uh, here's the website at me, at, at mo, at m online, at m, at m online .com. Um, So there is sober and there is recovery. So these are within, um, what I like about etnonline.com is that it, uh, it's not sponsored. Uh, they go through and they show uh, the definitions along with the meaning. So uh, let's start with, uh, I'm gonna get the URL here for the show notes and then let's go back over to sober because that was the start of our, uh, that was the start of our thing here. Uh, uh, the 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 context for this is that I have been sober for nearly nine years. Uh, incidentally, I'm wearing a clutch shirt. Uh, nine years ago in March, I went to see Clutch, the band. Uh, I enjoy them very much. Uh, I feel that they are very much a, a really great, fantastic show. Um, However, when I went, before I went, I had been in, in a very, um, I'd been kind of in an addicted mindset. So I went in, uh, I had a half a bottle of mead, and then I went to the show. That half a bottle of mead was enough to, uh, um, enough to influence me, right? So it wasn't like terrible, like here like a blackout drunk or anything like that but it was just more of like i i was standing there while they were playing the song uh, gone cold and as i was listening to the song i was like i could be enjoying this so much more sober and so that was that was the moment that was uh, as you heard the foley the snap of the finger to say i need to change this so the neck that would pretty much like then forward so like you know the day 28 29 i forget which one it is exactly i can go look it up here just so that way we're on uh, the same page uh clutch showbox market 2013 i believe let's see if this is the right one yes 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 so i also like uh, setlist.fm uh, also not sponsored um we do not have any sponsorships uh, over here. Uh, if so, they're declared. But uh, I just like to say it is like, you know, like you go to certain websites and it's like people will look at Wikipedia, uh, not sponsored. So it's kind of a fun thing for me. So, you know, here was the set list. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't want this. I have lots oh. of voicemails because I really didn't want that um i really didn't <laughs> want that <laughs> uh, at least it stopped uh, uh, 
<sighs> and see, there it is. There's the anxiety kicking up um, and just really uh, taking control. So I'll probably leave it in. Um, I'll make a content warning uh, for loud noise at four minutes in. Uh, I could redo the intro and all that kind of stuff, but uh, um, why? Because uh, of this person. So, gone cold off of their album uh, Earth Rocker. Uh, see, this is kind of why I like the the uh, website. You can look to see like what what albums are these featured on, right? So, Earth Rocker was the one they were touring on. So they went uh, they went heavy on that. Makes sense. Last Tyrant is one of their famous ones. Clutches their self-titled, and then all that. So, I like I like how Clutch does their their music, and that every set list is a little different. They try to you know like you get some of your famous hits of sorts. You know like the songs that everyone kind of knows, but then it's like they don't always play the same ones, right? So. Uh, I think it took a few times before I heard them play Space Grass live. And I was like, huh, that's like their most famous song, Space Grass. And yet, uh, didn't hear it. So, you know, when you have a band that's not really known for like one, like, like Nirvana is a good example here. So uh, they consciously went against the grain and they consciously said, all right, you know, we have, we have, uh, smells like teen spirit as our as our top hit uh we will not play it um especially if the audience is not respectful and i thought that was a really interesting kind of like they they just mess around um it's like okay that makes a lot of sense so that's the context behind my sobriety so let's close that out um yeah we'll go go over here uh Good to good to like have that in the in the repertoire there, um, so uh, let's go ahead and read this all out. Sober ag adjective mid fourteenth century, moderate in desires or actions, temperate, restrained, especially abstaining from strong drink. Also, calm, quiet, not overcome by emotion. So. Now it's been more of like not drinking, but you know, like I can have a sober, I can, so you can be drunk in certain contexts of like being inebriated, but then still calm. So you could technically be sober and not sober, these kind of things, these kind of word plays. That's where it gets really tricky. Um, so at, uh, that's where, uh, precision of words i find always kind of challenging and that's even where saying like sobriety versus uh recovery is a challenging thing but if we if we kind of say this in a certain way i think i think it'll make a lot of sense so let's go ahead and uh, do a little uh, drawing here a little doodly doodle because i have a good way to kind of show this here so we have one side versus the other side um, so I'll draw this out, um, you know, let's, let's see how this looks. So we have, we have on the one side, we have, uh, how do I want to do this exactly? Uh, I will split it with, a with a, uh, with a line here. So let's see how this all looks. Let's see how this all looks here. Um, let's go a little bit further. All right, let's see on that um, how we want to do this because I'm thinking a little bit of a, a little bit of a flash on the screen, green, and then I might go purple on the other side just to kind of have a little bit of a different color. So uh, if you didn't know, um, I like to call like player one, player two, um, in the sense of like my colored choices and all that. And as I can already tell here, um, we don't have that centered. So let's go ahead and get that centered. Um, there we are. 
and not quite there. So we'll do a little bit more. So that way the bottom down there is a little closer to center. Um, I'm doing it in purposefully like that just to kind of show how sometimes if I don't do it, hey, then uh, my mind will kind of like want to correct it later. So already uh, <laughs> now, now it's like, oh yes, now the text is all the way over there. So let's, let's just start over. Sober versus recovery. So let's go sober versus, let's see, recover. Yeah, this way we have a little bit more, you know, play room, if you will. Like it's not quite, um, it's not quite that same kind of like, it, it feels a little bit more, um, balanced now so there is that we have middle middle you know rough roughly middle i'm gonna look at the yeah so that'll be fine so when i think of sobriety versus recovery now this is what i think of i think of i think of two main concepts uh, because we have the definition um i'll go ahead and uh, type that in um and then I'll do the other one uh, because uh, and this way I don't really spoil it too much. So um, moderate in desires, uh, especially staining from strong drink. Also home so this is from let's see we'll bring that back over here from old french so uh, i'm not gonna I'm not gonna i'm not gonna let <laughs> i can embarrass myself but i'm gonna i'm gonna abstain in this one haha -ha. um because i don't speak french very well decent sober from latin not drunk temperate moderate sensible so here is that from a variation of se without and ebrius drunk. So interesting. So ebri ebriation and sober tie in in that regard. So that's that's interesting then. So uh, I like I like things that are kind of like that in the sense. Um, so let me put that in. Um, C without and Ebrius drunk, and, uh, and we could uh, do one of these. So in ebriation, let's see. So inebriate is to make drunk. So the process of drinking is how that relates with sober. So se e what is it? Se I, I don't know Latin either. Uh, ebrius? Yeah, there we go. Ebrius and then se ebrius without drunk or drinking. Or no, um, sorry. Uh, the opposite of that. So inebriation from in to make drunk to drink. So okay, um, kind of kind of cool when you see words that are related. Um, inebriate similar to sober. Um, then what else? What else? Uh, uh, let's put this in. Not drunk at the moment. No, that that's a that's a later. Okay, so mid fourteen C. Um, and then we'll do late fourteen C. Not drunk in the moment. And then. 
yeah there's that um let's bring that in a little bit more da 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 there we are cool cool so next we have recovery from around the same time a return to health after illness injury misfortune from anglo french that word old french that word as well but different remedy cure recovery from a past participle particip uh, sorry i was a b student uh, in literature and and english hey uh, there you go so recover the meaning of a gaining possession of property is different. Let's see if there's anything uh, related. So I saw the re dash. Um, so there is nothing really much here about sobriety. So that's where it uh, doesn't come up a whole lot. Um, I'll be honest on that. I, you know, when I went to AA, I didn't really hear a whole lot about that. Uh, so it's it's tricky there right so let's put this in here and we'll put that and then we'll put uh just because we'll put at me online that feels that feels about as close to it as possible at at me at him at mm, on, online i'll probably look it up someday i'll forget um not sponsored. Um, funny I should point that out here because I am at the moment not actually sponsored by a person either. So I have offered to be a sponsor for people, but uh, uh, it hasn't really happened or come to pass. Um, I'm going to do this off screen so I can save a copy. Um, don't mind me. Uh, I'm just doing that really quick. Sober versus um, recovery. So that way we have it uh, saved. You don't see all my junk there. So cool on that. Save it again for a good uh, health. So when I was talking before about like spoiler stuff, what I was what I meant to say was that um, only now have I realized that there is a distinct difference here. Um, not in terms of definition, but in terms of like uh, approach and maybe uh, going forward at what, I'll, what I'll look at. Um, because it, uh, there, is a, there is a wide difference. Um, what people sometimes say is like, uh, uh, something like this of like, uh, let me just put in the, the difference. Uh, let's go, yeah, let's do this. Da, da, da. And let's not crop it off too much there. Um, but we'll do one of these and we'll just pop it all the way down there and we'll uh, talk about this. I wanted to put that up at the top actually because that way we know like this is the subject and all that. Um, so when I think of sobriety and recovery, now my my perspective is like this. So I will phrase it down here. And since you probably saw the thumbnail um, before you clicked on the link, uh, hopefully this wasn't too much of like a, a, you know, I try not to do like clickbait or whatever, but uh, the kind of suspense of getting to this point where this is physical stuff. Uh, I guess we're going to go physical and then this is mental stuff. Let's, uh, let's bump them up closer to the, to like that. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll do physical one, and then I guess we're doing two, like, uh, and then uh, mental. So the reason why I wanted to make this distinction is because uh, I've been sober for nine years, right? So that means I have the physical stuff down. Like I don't, I get, I get the kind of uh, bad feelings about. Uh, when it comes to like alcohol ads on television uh, not that i watch television but like seeing someone drinking a beer when i'm kind of trying to unwind or relax is is offensive to me 
uh, in a way that uh, it is not to your average person because for me when I see that it kind of is like I'll explain it like this so my life at the moment is is not ideal yeah my physical health is not good I have to deal with many um, chronic pain related issues um, so it's not a it's not an easy time for me and so when I when I do my best to remain sober, that means to to moderate in desires to abstain from from doing anything that can spiral me out of control. Um, I used to think it was only related to the physical side, like the uh, like uh, we'll do a little uh, we'll do a little impromptu thing I just kind of realized here. So we have a little bit of a room for a certain symbol here. And if you're watching without, you know, if you're, if you're just like, let me just pop in and, and watch, then uh, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And I see this in a moment if I, if I get the drawing down right. Um, I will also use my uh, drawing platform here. So how does this look? All right, cool. So we have, uh, I just want to make sure I do it right. So on the one hand, we have something like this. On the other hand, we have something like this. And then what we'll do is we'll, uh, that goes like that and like that. And then I'll leave in the, in the, uh, the rough fitness there, uh, and I'll even uh, do it wrong on the first shot, too, as well. So we have the the yin yang, the yin and yang. I believe it's pronounced yon, yon. Uh, instead of instead of yang, you know, instead of yang, more of a yon. Bad, in yon. And this is uh, I haven't I haven't talked to anyone um, to confirm that. That's just what I've kind of kind of heard. Uh, it kind of makes sense to have yin yon as like sound similar. Then add a g on because that'd be like ying yang. So maybe maybe it's become that way um, as a sort of difference of pronunciation um, let's uh, let's go take a look uh, since we're here oh these are these are names as well um, yin yang from there uh, let's see to if there's any kind of uh, um <laughs> yeah here i am not reading everything uh how how yeah you try but uh should make a note to read that over uh sometime um not right now though <laughs> all right all right cool so we have uh within sobriety here there is an element of recovery. So the recovery is the mental side, the mental side of like realizing that you need to make a change because you've done wrong in your life. And so you need to recover that. You need to recover, not really even like your reputation, reputation per se. Like the way I kind of look at it is like, it, like it's not like returning to the norm, but rather like accepting that Yes, my actions I can be held accountable for for them. Um, let's just go ahead and have a little bit of fun here. So I can be held accountable to my actions. However, I do want to show that I can be better this time. So in some instances, it's like you know, like people are like, yeah, I'm in the business of giving second chances, but not like third and fourth chances. Like, yeah, that's really about all I would want is someone that you know makes mistakes as a human being is that when you make a mistake 
you are given the time to figure out like okay what well, what happened here how do we how do we get that all fixed and sorted out and then okay what do we do to avoid that in the future um and kind of say like all right cool like let's uh let's kind of say that that's what happened and uh, move on from that if it's uh if it's something that it's just like yeah you make a you make a mistake then uh that's about it then cool like okay let's go repair that mistake let's go figure out what what happened what caused that issue and that's where there's a duality there and let's see how this looks it might get really kind of weird um but we'll see um i also haven't been painting in a while so i'm i'm a little bit rusty when it comes to all of this uh it's been uh it's been tricky so let's kind of see how that looks I think that that looks pretty good actually I think that I like that uh, it's an ugly kind of match but that that kind of ugliness is my vibe as well so I'm down for it let's let's use it let's roll with it um, so yeah I believe that's where there's within each you know that's where you can kind of like they they simplify it to have one within the other but you can have here it'd be like a purple inside of a what is it a, a green it's a purple inside of a green inside of a purple and in a green so that kind of a thing right so the that approach is like there's always there's always bad within good there's always good within bad um it's when we get into this kind of notion of um, we do not accept any kind of uh, gray area. It's like, uh, so how how do you live your life without any gray area? Um, and if it's really that bad, then it's like, if I, if, you know, that's kind of like the... Uh, the recovery of yourself as well right the sort of like what caused you to get to that point of anger or frustration to want to uh, break your sobriety for me i haven't had i kind of was like locked in at that point because i'd um for all of that i'd been kind of like struggling for a while to figure things out um i wasn't doing too well in my life and my my jobs and my career and all that kind of stuff. I was laid off uh, a while prior. So what I did was I kind of was like, all right, you know, let's, I was laid off. Um, I'll get into more of the details on that separately because that would be uh, significantly deeper than I want to go with this. So uh, needless to say, my life was not in good shape. So that's where I was like, you know, here I am invited by my friend IDKFA. I don't kneel for anyone that uh, invited me to the show. And it was like, wow, I'm not enjoying the show much because um, like I can't enjoy the show very well because of all this uh, stuff in my system, all this garbage in my system. So I, I was like, all right, you know, that's the last time I'm I'm changing it all up i'm doing something different and i thought that was really and i thought that was great i thought you know here i am doing something really positive for myself and this is not a story of like anti-sobriety now or anything like that uh, but it's just more like i thought i had it on lock and i thought i knew you know that okay like i'm not going to be not going to be drinking anymore so the sort of out bursts that I used to have would not be as uh, when I, especially when I was drunk I'd get really mad and whatnot I thought like all right cool like no more of this I'm good to go my life is going to be in order um but I I've learned over the years now well over the past you know that this is what I'm kind of talking about I've I've learned that over the years would be a better way to approach that is that um, I don't really get angry to that same degree, um, but I do. I do need to work on things. I I I learn as best as I can. So 
this is me kind of showing the learning process by way of uh, just doodling. So we're just, you know, we're hanging out, we're vibing. Um, so um, the way I approach it, and let's see how that looks. That looks pretty cool. Let's roll with it some more. So the way I'm approaching this now is the idea of uh, um, how do I want to phrase it? Uh, do I want to phrase or did I lose the thought already? Um, yeah, so... Oh, I was going to talk about uh, a story that from today. So, yeah, so this is a good kind of, uh, uh, if if you will, if you may, um, kind of like how I'm working to improve myself. Um, the self-improvement uh, over the past few days of videos here, you might see a, a kind of trend there. And so I've talked about that Um I'm I'm as transparent as I can about everything that I can do. Um, I'm not transparent about the things that I'm uh, still working on because I don't want to be too biased. You know, you gotta you gotta figure out your problem before you can admit your faults, kind of a thing. Um, and here's something too that I, I want to just kind of point out there. That I want to kind of say so if if you care about someone then you know let's say that someone is acting really foolishly then the way to go about fixing that is is kind of like uh try to get them fixed but like don't uh i don't know it, it's kind of a weird thing it's like kind of like that i guess uh, kind of weird i guess um uh how do i best phrase it so It's so like if you really care about someone, you're gonna you're gonna try to help, and you're gonna like kind of kick their ass a little bit to help them out, right? That's kind of what people do in sobriety-related stuff. Um, it's kind of unfortunate that we need to do that. Uh, that's kind of like the way to fix situations, but um, just kind of like I don't know. It's it just something that that uh, we'll we'll kind of see what happens and. And with the given the current events to see, um, you know, like I'm uh, I'm going through a mental health situation, really. I mean, that's kind of the the truth of the matter is. So I'm just kind of interested to see not like really I, I, I might be passively calling attention to this idea. But uh, if if people are mental health advocates and then they acknowledge that, hey, there's a mental health issue here. How do they respond and how do they how do they want to approach that? If it's if it's like, hey, you're doing you're doing bad things. and I don't want to help. I mean, that's one way to approach mental health from like uh, the toxic positivity perspective where there there's no bad behavior existing at all then you're just looking only at one side of the coin. You have to look at both sides and you have to say like, all right, you know, if I really care about this person and I really want this person to feel better, then I have to kind of like kick, kick the person's ass a little bit and say like, hey, you're kind of acting foolish here. So I'm saying that, I'm saying it kind of directly in, in this kind of approach to kind of say like, this is kind of what I mean by recovery, right? So recovery is like, recovering the person recovering the the uh you know like i said the reputation is built on goodwill uh earned initially or just handed out for free uh, a lot of people do that um but it's like you know so if i if i have what i call as a, a mental health issue which it it is for what i what i've experienced both uh short term and I'm I'm realizing long term as well, so this isn't just like a one-off kind of a thing, um, but uh, yeah. So like it, you know, it's like if people want to be my friends, then they have to be willing to kind of you know give me a little bit of support and a little bit of guidance. And if not, then are we really just friends, or is it just kind of more of a vanity thing? then, you know, that's kind of a good question to ask, because if it's a vanity thing, like, I don't mind, 
you know, if you just want to pop by and say hello or anything like that, uh, or if you want to, uh, you know, chat about anything like that. But uh, if if uh, if the idea of me going through a legitimate struggle and then um, not accepting any of the sorts of like, hey, I'm working on this, um, then I don't know. I'm just kind of kind of throwing it out there. I'm just kind of leaning into that a little bit because it's it's like the bad side of recovery and sobriety or it's like you do you know you you do wrong things by a, a lot of it honestly is not on on purpose a lot of it is like i don't know what i call it exactly um let's see how this looks this is actually going to be pretty cool um so it, it's like if I go in and I do something dumb when I'm drinking, that's like, all right, you can blame the alcohol. But what happens for someone like myself when I do something dumb and I've been sober for approaching nine years, right? Like there's kind of that, uh, how do you... How do you uh, rationalize that? How do you kind of go through that thought? Because that is something that the it, it doesn't really make sense. You know, you've you fix the behavior that caused the the insobriety outburst, and yet the the thing I noticed uh, myself. This is me being as transparent as I can, as um, openly critical about myself as I can is that yeah um, I had the same kind of kind of mental outburst if you will as I did when I was drinking um, I would uh, react to certain situations in in extremely negative ways uh, extremely self-destructive ways so how can I be sober and act like that unless we figure out these details right so that's where it's important to, to define these things and to say like oh yes yes so we have we have sober and then we have recovery and then if we say like recovering return to health after illness then that kind of means that you start with sobriety and then get into recovery so there the two kind of play together. Now, if you if you don't have a drinking problem, you can still learn the recovery kind of ideas, but it's a little bit less. I would say a little. It it it's less. Um, so when you're sober, and you're you're trying to work through your sobriety. You you know you know it more. You can't you can't excuse it when you're actually like going to fix it. You know what you did, and you you can kind of figure it out. Um. And like it is it is good to say like here's here's what I was thinking at the time. Here's especially if you could remember some of it. Like here's kind of what I remember. Um. And if you can't, then you know there it is. So, it's like. I remember this, I remember that, I don't remember that. Um, so you can criticize me on what I say and what I do, um, and we'll go from there. Um, so I think a lot of it is, um, there's this kind of notion that maybe life is, you know, it's like this, this frowny face here, right? So you should never be sad is what I think some people approach life with, and it's like, no, like it's it's okay to be sad over certain things. Uh, it's okay to be happy over certain things. Um, there's the duality to all of this, but it's not okay. It's not okay to get angry without realizing what what the cause was. And I've I've talked about the the details of this, so I don't need to repeat that all of that um, in the uh, previous video. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, pre-event um, something recovery pre-event 
aftermath recovery of the video there I talk about this uh, so yeah um, the point of this video is to talk about how within your these two like I said like you could just be fully in in recovery as someone that maybe drinks or has no problem with with drinking um, and still have the recovery of like going to talk to a therapist so that's kind of the uh, what I did uh, today was I I didn't get a chance to talk to the therapist but what I did was I went in and uh, I did a little bit of research um, let me go ahead and uh, pop in that research um, so I can uh, go grab it where is it it is over in the accountability section of Z Discord, it is the uh, take this dot org, uh, not sponsored. Um, they do mental health stuff relating to find a counselor uh, or find a therapist. Um, so this article was useful for me along with uh, free resources. Let me see if this is the right one. Um, mental health resources page both of these will be in the show notes so we'll do three so between these i i learned to ask the good questions um, so the idea of asking uh, i don't know if this is a uh, exactly a uh, public you know like a uh, uh, sharing on the screen kind of a thing um it's transformative fair use uh not reading the whole thing uh yeah we're covered um maybe um um let's see so i i read all of the materials i could and i came up with my plan my plan being to call up and ask the four questions featured in the article so there you go so you have a inspiration to go read this article um so i went i went through and i read the article and i review the materials uh, the materials talk about uh, links to talk to therapists and um, when i was talking to someone today uh, today the 15th of december 2021 um, i i talked to this person about some uh, i was like hey like i'm thinking about doing some emotional stuff like uh, and then I was recommended uh, CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. This is where I'll, I'll open up uh, Wikipedia and we'll go, we'll go leave the yin yang uh, open or yin yang. And we'll go uh, CBT. CBT can refer to all of this kind of stuff, but we want to look at Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. So it's a psychosocial intervention that aims to reduce symptoms of various mental health conditions, primarily depression and anxiety disorders. CBT focuses on challenging and changing cognitive disorders, thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes, and behaviors improving emotional regulation and the development of personal coping strategies that target current problems. Although it was originally designed to treat depression, its uses have been expanded to include the treatment of a number of mental health conditions, including anxiety, alcohol and drug problems, marital problems, and eating disorders. CBT includes a number of cognitive or behavior psychotherapies that treat defined psychopathologies using evidence-based techniques and strategies. So let's go ahead and uh, pop this in and let's take a quick gander here. So C, I guess we have CTF uh, or BTF. Uh, <laughs> here I am. Uh, core beliefs, yourself, others, future. And then your behavior influences your thoughts, influences your feelings, influences your behavior. And then it works the other way too, um, I guess. Um, I haven't really studied this too much. I am. Uh, uh, we talked about this twice on the semi-interactive podcast. I believe um, the MDD episode and the anxiety episode specifically with 
Silver Storm 9653, I want to say, but I want to say too that there was another time we brought it up. Oh, it might have been like the, the first uh, game dev um, one where we talked about like the the take this dot org uh, as a resource for uh, game developers and that kind of a thing. So I want to take a look at this more, but I also want to kind of get in. So the here's the uh, here's the good and the better. So the good is I called up my insurance company. I said, hey, uh, here's all my information. Uh, here's my uh, taking a quick break to cough. Uh, I clicked on the wrong one, so <clears throat> uh, sorry for uh, one more time. All right, cool. We're back. Uh, hopefully, you didn't get that that coffin in your in your ears. So I called up my insurance company and I I asked the four questions that are in the in the takethis.org uh, resource guide that I thought was these were really excellent, simple, straightforward questions. The sorts of like. Do you do you cover this? How much does it cost? Um, I won't. I, yeah, I guess I'll spoil it. So we got the spoiler alert. Um, where is that spoiler alert? Um, uh, we got to scroll up here a little bit. Um, so how many sessions per year? What? Uh, how much do I need to pay of that amount? And do I need my PCP to approve this? Now, that was an interesting question. So that was something that kind of led me into thinking of... Uh, um, it, it's it's something that within the healthcare system, I've had plenty of, of conflict, um, primarily from, uh, from situations where I would expect more from a doctor situation, right? So... Um, when I called up, so I forgot I, I still had this drawing I wanted to work on. Cool. So when I called up the the insurance company, I was like, "Hey, like I'm asking these four questions, and I really don't want to be rude here." So I will say uh, directly that I was talking to someone who was uh, very much uh, new to doing this sort of. Um, phone roll but like new in the sort of uh aggressively new i guess i would say like um there's one thing if you're new and you don't know and you're like hey uh i don't know let me go find find out some information like that's one thing that's cool but it's like it's so aggressively new that all this all the rep was doing was i'd ask a question the rep would half hear it look up the documentation and start to recite it off to me. It's like, it, do I just need to go to the website then? If if all I need to do is just like have you recite, you know, you, you, you're you obviously just reading this material. I can tell I read, I read text all the time into a microphone and not all the time, but I'm starting to do that a lot more. And I know how that kind of, that <laughs> I'm, I'm learning to get better at it. Um, so I was really starting to honestly get a little frustrated and I was starting to get kind of mad and a lot of it, like I say, like if I'm being fully transparent and honest, uh, a lot of the, the current situations I'm going through are starting with the pain, physical pain side of things, but there's also the emotional pain side of things. So that emotional pain, right? That is, that is something that you can't really fix overnight, but I think I got to start to it because here I am calling about, you know, basically behavioral therapy, right? And then uh, 
I'm encountering a situation that is challenging my behavior uh, unintentionally. I thought that was really funny. That's like, oh, <laughs> like I realized only after the fact, after I kind of realized like, oh, hey, I, I figured all this out. I, I knew what was going on. But at the time it was like, I was getting a little bit mad. So what I said was uh, the call lasted, uh, I believe, 12 minutes and something seconds. It was like to ask four questions and to go through the the um, the verification pro process was kind of a kind of like excessive, I would say. But, you know, it's like I respect the first eight minutes of that. Then the first 10 minutes is like, all right, you know, kind of like, you know, all right, you got to verify one, one bit information. Yeah, whatever. But then it was like, so the rep was talking about something and it was just like going on and on. It was not listening to me as I was like, kind of like trying to like, be like, hey, I'll, I want to get going. So then the rep asked me, uh, so, you know, like kind of like, what's your what's your take on that or whatever. And I was like, uh, honestly, I wasn't paying attention. I wanted to get off the phone with you four minutes ago. I think I said, actually, I think I said a little while ago here. Um, but uh, I, you've answered all the questions I had and thank you. So I was like trying to be as polite as I could because uh, that's something that I'm learning. <laughs> uh, shit, life is a really weird thing. You, you, you learn. Funny, huh? Um, so there I was trying to figure out my way out of this excessively long phone call that was uh, irritating me. And interestingly enough, it was about getting resources for treating uh, my own kind of, kind of, uh, I don't know, over the past two weeks, so like after my after my healthcare event uh, stopped working for me after the sacroiliac joint injection uh, failed for the now third time. This time it lasted ten days instead of about two weeks. Uh, I got kind of like it, I was getting into frustration, anger mode, which is where it's good to realize this now that when I'm not feeling good, that's my reaction. Now that's like, you say that, and it's like, yeah, of course, but if you don't know, then what do you do? You end up, you end up being very hostile needlessly, or you end up, you know, damaging things that you did not need to do. So there I am just trying to like realize, like trying to practice all of this, because like, it's one thing to say, oh yes, everyone, Yes, yes, yes. I'm I'm doing these steps, right? You know, it's it's easy to be performative, but to actually like set it into motion, I was actually kind of happy with myself. I I believe um I don't have access to the uh the health insurance um phone logs. Um I don't record my conversations with the reps with my health insurance I nearly said by name because they say that the calls may be monitored so if I ever had a concern I could say like hey you know can you play that clip from the the 15th you know can you can you check in on all that um, so you know maybe maybe if I would have been you know, this kind of like, this makes me wonder, like, how much of my personality has been shaped by all this as well? Um, both the, both the sobriety and the recovery, both the lack of, of inebriation, chemicals, and the realization that I'm still emotionally immature. Um, I'm not, I don't think any less than anyone else. I think we just develop skills at many different uh, paces. Um, I've developed, say, like this art stuff over over the course of the last few years. Um, more so like I can get to that point where I can just kind of doodle. And we're just kind of like seeing the results of those doodles afterward. And it's like, whoa, that is that is wild. That is like, what is going on here? And then you ask that, and I say, uh, good question. I don't know either. So, 
we can both ask that it's it's good um so yeah it's it's one of those things that you wonder about and you say like all right so is zombie paper really doing better um you know zombie paper is saying that yes you know i i've i've acknowledged the wrong in my life and i'm going to work on it so i would say this uh dear listener that yes Yes, I believe that this is an example, a positive example of uh, remaining sober and remaining in recovery. So I don't know. So sober, let's say nine years. Um, let's put that in a smaller size. Um, let's actually do that uh, as that. So let's do that. Um, and then let's say years like that. So we don't know because it's like, how do you gauge, how do you even gauge recovery from like a, a time perspective? That's where it's like, this is practical. This is pragmatic to say like, uh, what is it? March 29th. I'm looking at, uh, it doesn't have any URL, but it was like March 29th, 2013. So we'll just put March 20, no, 13. So March 2013. See, this is how much I remember my sobriety stuff. I remember the 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 physical stuff. Or I remember, uh, how, how, is, how am I critiquing myself here? So March 29, 2013. So uh, I've done the physical stuff fairly well. Uh, I guess I've invented a new... Uh, calendar pattern so march 29 2013 let's go back and double check so yes indeed so i've done the physical stuff i've i've done the abstinence right but as far as doing you know that this is where we might talk about like the 12 steps kind of a thing but you know it's like this is a lot so I, I'd phrase it like this. I'd kind of like, because this way we can kind of have, we can fill in the space a little bit more. We don't have to like spend all day here. Um, so this is very much like a kind of, a, okay, let's start. Um, very much like this, angular, right? You can measure this. You can say, here, it, here is the the physical stuff. You can You can test the blood alcohol limits. You can test for whatever you want. You can test these things, but in recovery here, your recovery is a lot more kind of like curvy, a lot more kind of like wiggle wiggle. We don't know what's going on here because in in any given situation, like I say, any given morality situation, if you're talking about outside of like a sort of a bigotry example, a clear example of like, liable or slander or defamation of character these sorts of uh, criminal actions right if some of these are straightforward cut and dry but even then it's like why do we have so many lawyers if life is so cut and dry and it's it's interesting that it's like oh okay so there is ambiguity here especially when I am trying to navigate my way through this. So that's where I'm just saying that it's it's good to kind of like think about multiple perspectives there and, and try to like figure out like, okay, what's really going on here? What What is happening with this situation? Because sometimes people don't really want to mess with it. They might be like, yeah, I'm, I'm a mental health advocate, but... I don't deal with these situations, but I can empathize, right? I can understand that you're going through something. I don't want to be involved with that and whatever. But it's something that as I'm going through life and as I'm figuring this stuff out, it's like, yeah, like how do you how do you handle like sobriety stuff? So it's like don't drink or do anything gnarly dude uh, don't become seduced by anything 
that might make you go crazy. So this is this is kind of like the key thing here, right? So uh, because th this is where like I I thought I had that on lockdown, right? So this is where this is where it, it gets challenging, right? So this is where the the you need to kind of look at that and we'll invert the color. Um, actually, what we'll do is we'll do one of these. So we'll do um, opaque, and then we'll say uh, don't be don't become seduced by anything that might make you go crazy. Uh, this can happen when you are sober. Surprise. I found that out uh, <laughs> nearly nine years in. <laughs> I acted very much the same way when, uh, yeah, so there you go. So you, you admit to yourself where you've gone wrong, and then you say, like, I've not really broken sobriety, sure, but I've broken my recovery. And that, like I say, that's the kind of nebulous, weird kind of a situation. So how do you fix this side of it then so this side of it is that you go in and I guess you do something like uh, uh, admit your faults and no that's that's the next part uh, how am I doing this what is what is going on here um figure out what you did wrong Trying to apologize for your actions. And then on your shit, yo. So where does the um, physical part of that come in? Well, this is where... So, so this has puzzled me for a while that how come I can be addicted to alcohol and cannabis but not oxycodone that I've been prescribed by a doctor legally um, practicing medicine legally that is a valid prescription um, that I've, I've basically uh, not really touched too much because uh, after being discharged from that um, that practice and moved into a different practice with another pain at doctor uh, it was like you know kicked out the door with a 30-day supply of oxycodone it's like so how is this going to last me forever is kind of honestly the thing so um that's where uh talk to doctor about about health issues because this is the thing. This is me being as as transparent, as open as possible, right? So this is like, you know, you got to give me one percentage of empathy here when I, when I say this. Because I do mean it sincerely, but I just need to kind of make sure that it, it, I say it clearly like that. Because, uh, I don't know, things can get kind of weird sometimes. So I just want to phrase it like that to say that. I am being sincere when I say that uh, my physical health has influenced my mental health. So I need to get both fixed, right? I need to work on both of them. And it's something that, that it's not, you know, you, you start with figuring out these kinds of things of like talking to a doctor, figuring out the physical health stuff thinking through what you've done wrong, doing all that, and, you know, going going from there. Uh, so that's where it's like what I'll be doing going forward here is in a few days. Um, I don't know when this publishes, so it might be today or yesterday for you or whatever. Um, what I want to do is I want to talk to my pain management doctor because I received this good information from the insurance company as well. The insurance company rep told me that 
um, when I asked about the PCP, and I thought that was really good. Um, I nearly said procrastinators podcast there, but now I did. Um, so when I talked about the the question of do I need to get um, approval from my primary care physician, the answer was no, but. So no legally, but they want a referral. So my PCP and I have had a little bit of a falling out. Um, the gist of it is that, um, as I described in, uh, I believe the first video in this series with when I was drawing, I was talking through it. Um, I was asking about an action plan, but the doctor was mad that I was asking about like, hey, how come the all the records aren't being sent through? I'm, I'm being told that the records aren't being sent through or weren't sent through so i'm following up on this and i got i got an earful about that so it's like i don't want to deal with this anymore you know there are thousands and millions of trillions of doctors there are more doctors out there than there are grains of sand in the whole universe right but more realistically if there is such a conflict and disagreement there if it just over primary care like I realized through thinking about this that he was, I was accidentally challenging him on many situations that weren't even really all that bad. Like one in particular, it was like, uh, I had mentioned that I had been talking to some friends about my health care and I was like trying to get some ideas and he was like, no way, friends don't know anything about health care. Just like... <laughs> all right uh, uh uh all right cool so he's just a very angry man and i think he just needs to you know get get a little uh take care of a different patient i i'm okay with going somewhere else um maybe he needs a little bit of recovery <laughs> uh it was funny uh, so like when i was talking about the pcp there um that's when the rep was saying like yeah you know we the the doctor you you know your your pcp would would find a therapist for you or whatever and i was like i don't want to talk about this now but i am going to file a complaint about my doctor and so the the rep goes like this of like Okay, when when you're ready, the the we will make sure that you file this complaint, and it's like when I'm ready, and I'll, I'm like already kind of like remembering how I was kind of losing my cool a little bit, and I was like kind of noticing that a little bit, that tension, that that anxiety, right? That kind of like you know, um, it's okay, I'm not, uh, and so that's where. I have to I have to say that the way I handled the situation by not getting mad when I easily could have I mean even let's let's be honest here even outside of the phone call being recorded primarily in case the patient gets kind of uppity or the the rep gets too you know like the rep need need a little bit more training I'm I'm okay with that but it's like it's not my business to, to put someone in a bad mood like that for just doing a job like that. So that's where I was trying my best to keep my cool. And as soon as I got my exit, I was like, hey, I really don't want to talk anymore. I've got my questions answered. I thank you and take care and have a good day. There was one more it's it's kind of like a weird thing with with phone calls sometimes it's like hey i gotta get going okay bye and then like just leave but other times it's like oh okay um so see you next week no i really gotta get going okay so see you next week then oh yeah sure 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 okay then that's a deal or you know, like you kind of see already how it's like this back and forth so sometimes, you know, I, I think I'm being very straightforward. Um, so this is kind of where we'll do one more, but we'll do it a little bit clearer. 
So I think I'm doing very straightforwardly and I think I'm doing the best that I can. I feel like I'm doing uh, doing good in, in expressing a thought, but then it turns out to be not the case for the recipient. So this is where it's like, you don't like, I think the problem with, with all this and the problem that, that I'm starting to realize and the problem that I think is where it, it we're kind of manifest. It was kind of like in the in this kind of perfectionist uh, perspective of like objectively good grades in school and all this kind of stuff. The sort of like you can't fail, and it's like you know in life you kind of need to. So what do you do? What do you do about that? Do you just say like you you can't fail at all? Uh, that's what causes a lot of people to to get really fucked up in life. So you, what you really have to do, and I'll make this a short one. I'll just kind of say that when you're dealing with someone that is, um, you know, in, in a, in a mental kind of a, a state that is different than that person's norm, you really have to say to yourself, all right, how am I going to handle this? And what, what is going to happen going forward? Because, there are times where it's like you got to just block the person out for your own mental health, right? You can't you can't sacrifice yourself to save someone else, but it's like if you care about that person, you might try. And and this is no like I w I would say like this is no criticism toward anyone in particular. Like I'm just kind of saying this more to get it you know get the get the sort of anxiety out of my mind because like I say like I need to go like th this is this phone call I had with the insurance company was really definitely like dialed into that kind of like I am normally a lot more patient right now physically I'm not patient so I need I need to get the help that I need to get better right so that is that is a a that is a, a physical fact that I need to talk to my doctor about and so I'll be doing that. I'll be talking to my pain at doctor and I'll be be asking my pain at doctor for an action plan. That's that's the key word that I want to I want to put on both sides. So action plan. Got to think of like action plan, like action button, action button. We'll do that. Not sponsored, but uh, we got to do we got to do it right. So this is the action plan. Action plan. Fix your shit. Uh, what about this? Action plan. Uh, do I have to worry about the thumbnail, though? I guess I do. So let's, uh, let's do this. Um, there we go. Easy censorship. Um, action plans. Uh, fix your shit. Uh, easy. Fix your shit. And then what we'll do is we'll do just a space here. And then uh, what we're going to do? Put it right here. And then I uh, won't we'll put it uh, not sponsored with action button stuff there. Um, fix your shit. Um, get clean, get, get sober, that sort of a thing. Figure out what is wrong and, yeah, figure out what is wrong. So for me, like, like today, like that, this is where, you know, I have to say that kudos to myself, like, you know, I'm, I'm being as impartial here as possible, but I'm giving myself a little bit of uh, credit, a little bit of a pat on the back by saying, good job, zombie paper. You didn't get pissed off at that at that rep that uh, clearly was just following protocol only and was just going by a script and could not figure out the sort of nuance that might be required through a phone call with any patient, right? So, um, kudos to you, Zombie Paper, for not um, getting a little bit more mad or anything like that. Nothing passive-aggressive. 
nothing. You just said, you said it the way it should have been said. Like, that if you were, and I got to draw a little snake here, so don't mind me. Um, so if you were in that situation, how would you want that to be handled, right? So uh, if you were the the rep and you got someone that was a little bit kind of like it, someone that would say like, Hey, like I, you've already answered all my questions. I really don't want to talk anymore. Like that's really about the most polite way possible to say like, Hey, you know, I got to get going. And they got cool shades now. Cool, cool, cool. Right. So, you know, that's where it's like, you really got to say, I got to make that black to make it really stand out. Um, so it that that's something we'll go with blue we'll we'll mix it up just a little bit we'll go blue and then we'll go like how do we want to do this like that so you know it's like yeah like you i i didn't interrupt i didn't i wasn't rude at the most i was rude was just not listening to last 30 sec no it was more like the last minute so like hey you know i answer all my questions but that's really about it i wanted to get off the phone a little while ago it was kind of being more direct but at the same time i feel like at that point you're already kind of like you're you're kind of like it's like I, i'm i'm done you're you're okay like you've done your your thing you've done what you needed to do and now I'd like to get off the phone. I would like to um, not say anything more to you. I appreciate you, but I must. I must go now. Uh, if if that is your the honest sensation you're feeling, how do you approach that in a in a respectful way? Um, and I feel like I'll give myself the benefit of the doubt, and I'll say this too. I'll say that that was a good step forward toward my own actually kind of trying to learn all this stuff right you know like not just like oh yeah hey i'm going to therapy folks like look at me i'm in therapy but actually like trying to like figure out this kind of stuff like you know you can go read a wikipedia article and that can help you figure out a little bit of this so do you need to go to therapy just to go to you know, like learn this kind of stuff with Wikipedia that, you know, you can learn like what is CVT? And I read it off a little bit earlier, um, so I won't repeat myself. Um, so having that um, is a effective way to learn the basics. So that's where, like I say, like for my health care appointment with my pain management doctor, I went in and I I said, like, hey, I looked up everything related to, or I'll say, like, I looked up everything in the book related to the sacroiliac joint, which got me into the sacroiliitis and the ankylosing spondylitis stuff. So, you know, if if you want to, uh, you know, teach me more about this stuff and, and all of this, um, this is where I'm also covering my bases by tomorrow. Um so my my healthcare appointment is in two days. It's Wednesday. It will be Friday afternoon. So what I'll be doing is we'll be doing I'll be doing this. So uh, tomorrow I will go call the uh, you know I, I keep procrastinating, but with good reason, like good physical reasons. Nothing really inside of my control it's like all right you know i just have to accept it and move on so i call the teledoc to ask about my symptoms and all this kind of stuff to get my second opinion prior to going in along with that i will call the nurse line to see kind of validate the information and see what they recommend see kind of like if they have any kind of ideas because go going into the appointment I will have the second opinion I will ask about the therapy stuff or like you know counselor the talking about stuff uh, whatever the case may be but I will say that 
because of the lack of physical pain management from your clinic, I had an outburst that caused a negative reaction in a friends group that may not quickly recover. So I need your assistance as a doctor that is empathizing with me as a patient to help me figure out the physical stuff. So this is where we talk about the sobriety stuff, right? Physical, we're, we're tying it all back in. This is spiraling back into control. Uh, so I need help with the physical pain management and then mental pain management. And so if the doctor does not want to work with me, then, all right, cool, well, two complaints and two new doctors. And we'll just keep on rolling from there. Um, but I am willing to work with anyone that is willing to work with me. So if there's a problem and we figure out something and agree to disagree, then great. If, if the doctor, like the PCP, instead of like doing any kind of doctoring, just complained at me for 30 minutes or whatever, just talked me out of like needing his help, then I'm going to fuck him. So if, if later on, you know, let's say that he works on his behavior, like, sure, I'd go back, but it, it's something that it, it's like, that's kind of an interesting thought that I want to explore briefly. Right. So I think a lot of people are kind of like that, like with my friends group example there, a lot of people are just like, ah, oh, fuck it. I don't want to deal with this person. And so, yeah, you know, you just say to yourself like, all right, cool. Fuck him. You know, fuck this person. I don't want to deal with this person anymore. Um, they're out. And like that, that works. Sure. But then, you know, what do you do? Or what do you really do in that situation? How do you live? with that kind of person being around how do you how do you accept that so you know do you do a full ostracization when the person's already said like hey i'm i'm working on this is that a good look i mean i'm doing the best i can so the the thing with me compared to the doctor might be more of like a a personal basis versus a professional basis i guess so you know, you call in for health insurance, you get a bad rep, a representative that doesn't really know what's going on. But like, I could, I could reasonably trust like, all right, this person isn't complete, you know, lying to me kind of a thing. Like, okay, I understand. Like, you know, if someone is new, they're just working through this pro process and pacing. They don't know the, the phone etiquette pacing. All right, I can I can accept this. I can work with this, right? Like, that's fine. Um, it, it got me a little bit angry and a little bit mad, but it's like, all right, you know, let's sit with that. Let's figure out why. Um, I really just wanted to ask four brief questions. I didn't want to get into a whole 30, 40 minute uh, conversation about like, how's my day? How's, how, you know, let's update your demographics. Let's check all this. Like, I don't want to deal with this. I want to get my answers to my questions and I want to get along with my day so that I'm focusing on this and that I'm kind of noticing this is kind of like, all right, you know, your expectations of calling up and having a nice, easy, straightforward time did not match the expect the, your expectations did not match the the reality which was this person just didn't know better and just was kind of like bopping around so i forgive that that's nice and easy um the doctor being mad at me um i do forgive the doctor in that i understand why the doctor did that however i I'm not friends with this doctor. We're not on a first name basis. I think I know his first name, but it's like, yeah, you helped me out a little bit, bud, along with all these other doctors. We're not friends. We're not like hanging out in social groups and whatever. So, you know, it, when I can just report and move on, as they say, but with friends groups, you kind of have to be like, oh yeah, you know, there's, there's that doctor over there. Um, let me not, 
you know, not create hostility here, um, but let, let's just like kind of move on kind of a thing. So in these situations, I mean, you know, it's difficult, right? Um, but we've, I've kind of, I kind of rambled on a bit too long here, but I think that was a good conclusion to say that when it comes to people and roles, that's why, you know, you have, you have people as, um, you know, a profession, a, an employee, you don't have like, oh yeah, there's army paper over there that are more individual. When you have individuals, um, individuals are complicated and they're not always easy. But then if you like them, then, you know, give them their space or help them figure things out or say like, hey, you're, you're, you're being stupid right now. All right, cool. Let's uh, figure out in a few days. Oh, okay. Like this was going on. Okay. Then you're working on it. Okay. Uh, you know, get working on it and we'll, we'll, we'll talk more later. Uh, kind of like that sort of a thing. So with all that being said, I will conclude by saying thank you for meandering with me through this uh, exploration of uh, sobriety versus recovery with many examples of my life where I shared my vulnerabilities, I've shared my frustrations, and I've uh, worked toward being a, a better person, even when it might seem not seem like it, um, even when it seems like it. Yeah, so... That's it. Uh, you've been listening to me talk about this. Um, I've been Zombie Paper. You've been uh, polite for listening through all of this. And uh, take care. Bye bye. <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> all right, take care, everyone. Uh, we're going to have this awkward kind of like goodbye kind of a thing, like I was saying for that phone call. Like, hey, you're done? No, I'm not done. Are you sure you're done? I got to get going. No, uh, like, I want to talk to you some more. Like, hey, you know, what's the deal? Uh, I'm... All right. Save and quit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye.